What's up, peeps, freaks, and geeks? Welcome back to this very special edition of the Hitting the Marks Pro Wrestling Podcast, powered by the Roar Network at thegorillaposition.com, presented by Hami Media and in association with Last Word on Pro Wrestling.com. My name is Jargo. I'll be your host for the day, but let's welcome in our very special guest. Ladies and gentlemen, standing in at six foot eight inches tall, 265 pounds. He is a former three time IWGP World Tag Team Champion, two time GHC Tag Team Champion, a World Tag League w- winner. In 2011, alongside the murder grandpa himself, Minoru Suzuki. Representing Suzuki Goon, he is one half of the Killer Elite Squad and one of the competitors in this year's G1 Climax Tournament. Ladies and gentlemen, the American Psycho, Mr. Lance Archer. Mr. Archer, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thanks, man. I'm glad you got Suzuki Goon correctly, man. Most of them don't. Hey, man, I, I've been watching New Japan now. I have been fully enthralled inside of the world of New Japan for probably about five years now. So I, 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 one of my very first shows when I first started watching it was when you guys had returned from uh, Pro Wrestling Noah. That was one of the craziest things. I'm sitting there watching it, and I'm like, now who in the hell are these guys? Yeah, and that's the crazy part. You know, I've, I've been rocking... Uh, with New Japan since 2011, one of the original, the OG members of Suzuki Goon, uh, and we've been tearing it up for years prior to you know going over to Noah for those two years, and then when we came back, it was it was kind of funny because you know the company New Japan had grown, uh, New Japan World had really taken off, Access TV was being more viewed over here in the states, uh, so it was one of those things like you know we kind of been out of sight, out of mind as far as the world was concerned, you know, in Japan, we were still very much viewable and then everybody knew about us and things of that nature. But the, you know, the people around the world, they weren't really watching, you know, Suzuki goon and didn't even know. I mean, people were like, Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, Killer elite squad. I didn't even know these guys were still wrestling. How long have they been teaming? And, you know, at that point we're already two time IWGP tag team champions. So, you know, it's kind of an inter- interesting dynamic to return to the company uh, after being together for so long and, but still being seen by so many new people. I guess one of the first questions that I have for you is, number one, how does it feel to be home? You, you've you been in Japan on the Kazona Road Tour leading up to the G1 kickoff in Dallas next Saturday. Right. Uh, how are you feeling, and how was the Kazuna Road Tour for you? Uh, it was really good, man. Um, you know, I mean, it's it's one of those things like Kazuna Road is one of those tours that's, you know, it, it, right after Dominion, which is always a really big show. Actually, you know, that, that was my debut show with New Japan back in 2011 was Dominion. Um, and then you've got the G1 that starts up, you know, it's the G1 has grown and expanded over the years from when I first started there, my first year with the company and my first G1 way back in 2011 to what it is now. Um, so now, you know, like I said, Kazuna Road is kind of just kind of a, a, a tour before the, the G1 starts. And, you know, there's a lot of multi-man tag matches and stuff like that on the, sh- the cards and whatnot. But, you know, still the audiences in Japan, you'd think that, you know, it would be a little less and there'd be, uh, you know, a lot less viewership and things of that nature. But, you know, in Japan, New Japan puts on such a good product. and The fan base is so strong right now that pretty much every show we did was either sold out or close to sold out. Yeah, absolutely. As as we were kind of setting up this interview, I had asked what you wanted to discuss on the show. Most of the interviews that we do are career retrospectives, but today... I kind of wanted to focus more so on the G1, the scale and scope of the greatest tournament in professional wrestling in my mind. Oh, yeah. This year's field features 20 of the best professional wrestlers in the world divided into two blocks. It's scored in a round robin style tournament. Inside of the tournament, you'll be wrestling nine singles matches and nine tag matches over the course of roughly four weeks leading up to the three night finale inside the Budokan. Mr. Right. Archer, you're very well traveled. You're a vet of these New Japan tournaments at this point. Mm-hmm. As a participant inside the G1 World Tag League, tell us about the grind that is these New Japan tours. Yeah, you know, I mean, they can definitely get, you know, pretty hectic. Like we were just talking about Kazuna Road, it was 10 shows over 12 days. You know, we arrived the day before, did four shows in a row, had one day off, did three shows, did, had one more day off that was a six hour bus ride. Um, and then did three more shows and I came home just yesterday. So, you know, it's one of those things And the, the G1, um, they've gotten a little smarter with the G1. You know, the last time I participated was five years ago. Um, you know, and the G1's changed drastically. There was one G1. I know we did, uh, nine shows in 11 days, uh, for a G1. And, you know, that was 
hectic and crazy back then. And that was the G1 singles tournament, same scenario. Um, like I said, they have changed it and broken up the, the shows from blocks and stuff like that. Um, you know, and there was, you know, I think 19 shows total in the whole tournament, um, 18 over there in, in Japan and whatnot. And, you know, they've done a better job of trying to take care of the guys uh, on the tour. You know, again, I haven't done this in five years, so it's going to be kind of a new experience. But uh, from the guys that have been in the tour the last few years, especially the last couple of years, you know, they they're they're bullet training the guys around. They're flying the guys around. They're not making us sit on the buses for six, seven, eight hours and wrestling G1 matches. So they're trying to take care of the guys a little more, giving them a few days off here and there uh, in different places like Tokyo and Osaka, which are, you know, pretty nice places to get a few days off and to rest and relax, kind of recharge yourself in between some of these big main event shows. And, you know, it's like every single show now, because it's on New Japan World, um, it's a big, huge deal in comparison, again, to what it was when I first started in the first four that I did. Um, so, you know, it's very visible by everybody around the world. Like you said, it's the, and in my opinion as well, it's the best singles tournament in all of professional wrestling. Doesn't matter what company we're talking about, because again, it's, it's more than a month long tournament, you know, and it's kicking off for the first time ever in the United States in Dallas. And that's one of the craziest things is that the American fans, I don't even understand. I don't even think they truly understand what they're getting. Uh, by what's happening in Dallas, you know, so we're hoping that a lot of people will come out and experience it live. And if they don't, you know, that they'll regret not doing that. The G1 actually started in 1991 as a continuation of the August tournament tradition inside of New Japan, going all the way back to World League in 1974, right. just a couple of years after the company's founding. Um, after the World League, it then became the MSG League, both of which were just absolutely dominated by Antonio Inoki. In 1983, the tournament would become known as the International Wrestling Grand Prix, thus the IWGP branding on all of the championships. Right. Um, that featured winners such as Antonio Inoki, Hulk Hogan, Andre the Giant. Then in 89, Ricky Choshu won the tournament, branded as the World Cup. As someone who's been inside of New Japan off and on since 2011, knowing the passion of the Japanese wrestling fans, tell us how that early history of New Japan kind of shapes the prestige of this tournament inside of a 2019 context. Well, you know, I mean, I think there truly is a lot of history. You know, there's very few companies that have existed as long as New Japan has. Again, you know, there's a lot of fans around the world that are just now discovering New Japan Pro Wrestling, but it's a company that's been around close to 50 years now, you know. Um, so the, the different histories and how it's changed and the, the men that you just mentioned that were winners and participants in, in these, you know, in the G1 Climax itself has only had uh, three foreigners ever in the finals and, and only one winner ever, and that was Kenny Omega. Uh, that wasn't a, a Japanese descent and whatnot. So, you know, the history of it is is tremendous from what it was and, and to what it's becoming uh, or what it had become and then what it is becoming today in 2019. You know, it's it's a tournament that highlights guys in ways that you don't normally get to see them. You know, I've been kind of a tag team specialist. I don't know if you want to call it that for the bulk of my career and the bulk of my time in New Japan. Um, so this is an opportunity for someone like myself who who's been seen mostly as a tag team wrestler to be seen as a, a singles wrestler and given an opportunity to present myself in a new light, in a new way in front of a new audience. So it's a really cool experience and I'm excited for it in a way that I don't even know if that's explainable. This is your fifth G1. Is that correct? My fifth one, but it's been five years since my last one. Um, how does the G1 compare to like a world tag league? I know that you yourself along with Davey boy you guys dominated the new japan pro wrestling tag team scene for mm -hmm. years how, right. do, how does working the tag league versus working a singles league like the g1 how does that compare well i mean obviously you're talking about tag teams in comparison just a singles match um uh, and then you know the tag league has grown itself but at the same time the tag league doesn't get the same amount of exposure and time that the g1 climax gets um, like I said, every single show in, on the G1 Climax will be on New Japan World. Um, the, the kickoff here in Dallas is going to be live on Access TV, so all American fans can watch it live on Access TV. If you're anywhere else in the world, you can watch it live on New Japan World. Um, and then the same goes with every single show. All 19 shows are going to be live on New Japan World. Um, the Tag League itself, you know, they, they have some key nights that are on New Japan World live. Um, and then they air, you know, 
on demand some of the league matches, but you know, in a, in a less productive manner, you know, the production's smaller and stuff like that. So it doesn't get the same amount of attention and light that the G1 Climax singles tournament gets. So it's not as grueling. It's not as hard. There's not as many matches. And again, you're working in a tag team capacity in comparison to just being a singles match. This year's tournament is incredibly stacked. And and like you were mentioning there, it's a very special this year because it's kicking off July 6th, a bit earlier this year and a week before the next date. And that's due to the first show taking place here in the United States at the American Airlines Arena, uh, one of your claimed hometowns of Dallas, Texas. Mr. Right. As I was saying, this, this card's incredibly stacked. What an opportunity for your home market to host the kickoff of this incredible Incredible tournament. Oh yeah, absolutely. And you know, a lot of this came about because of our relationship with Access TV and Mark Cuban, and you know his ownership of Access, and obviously the American Airlines Center and stuff of that nature. And he's a real big supporter of New Japan Pro Wrestling, uh, and Access TV is is a real big component on wanting New Japan Pro Wrestling to grow itself. Um, you know, I'm doing this interview with you here today. I've got uh, a few coming up. I've got one tomorrow, and then I've got a couple on the first, and then I've got a live one on the third here in Dallas. So, you know, they're really pushing and promoting and trying to get people to truly understand, you know, what is actually coming to Dallas. And, you know, the fact that, again, it's at the American Airlines Center, you know, which just happens to be hosting another show that's going to be on July 1st there. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, it's kind of a cool experience, I think, for people. If they'll stick around, come to Dallas, check out the G1, you know, that I hear a lot of grumblings about wrestling and what they don't like about what they're seeing on TV with the local major promotion that exists right now. Uh, and if you're not happy with that, you're more interested in just straight up hard nosed <laughs> pro wrestling. Sorry, that's my dogs. Um, I absolutely tell you, come watch New Japan Pro Wrestling. You will not be this one. Well, and Dallas is an interesting market for this because, of course, Dallas and that part of Texas, of course, was always a world-class territory. Right. It was never a big WWE territory to begin with. How, how is the excitement level down there inside of Dallas for this huge event? Uh, like I said, there is excitement, but I also think there's a lack of understanding of what the G1 Climax is by the American fan base. They, I don't think they truly understand what they're getting. You know, New Japan has expanded their market worldly. Um, they've done some stuff out in California. We did a small, like, house show tour across the U.S. for three or four shows. Um, you know, and that was an unfortunate situation because that was right during the governmental shutdown and they weren't able to get the visas secured for a lot of the Japanese talent. Um, so, you know, they've got a few hurdles to overcome with some of the fans in America and the U S fans are very demanding to say the least, I guess they, they want to know who's wrestling, who's wrestling, who, and so on and so forth. And, you know, new Japan has done so well with the, the tournament itself, but they're used to how they do things in Japan. And they literally didn't announce who was you know, wrestling in the G1 or the matches until just a week or so ago. Um, you know, and so I think for a lot of American fans, that was one of the deterring factors as to wanting to come to the show. And now they know, they know exactly who's in it. The A block is extremely stacked. I mean, both blocks are stacked. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, the, the headliner, the main event of the show at the American Airlines Center is going to be Okada and Tanahashi. Um, Legends. It, Legends, legends, you know, Tanahashi is, is attributed to basically saving New Japan and bringing it to the era that it is now. And Okada has become this generation's, you know, major star for New Japan. And it's one of those things that he's going to be around for a long time and lead in, you know, a next generation into the future. Um, so I think there's an excitement about it. I think there's going to be a lot of people that are going to probably miss out and then they're going to regret it. But the people that are going to come and see the show are going to leave this show. And I guarantee you, they're going to be all over the internet and they're going to be telling their friends. And it's going to be one of those things where they're going to be like, I can't believe the amount of amazing wrestling that I got to watch live. And I get a little revenge on uh, Will Ospreay. Yeah, you're going to be taking on the winner of this year's Best of Super Juniors, the current reigning IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion, a right. man who many are calling the best wrestler in the world for the first half of 2019, the aerial assassin, the new Twitter assassin, Will <laughs> Ospreay. Uh, this is one of the biggest mismatches on paper inside of the tournament. You're, you're a much right. bigger, stronger, more experienced, but right. just in talking with you here today, you don't strike me as the kind of man who's going to take the dragon slayer lightly no not at all especially considering you know he he actually bested me in the new japan cup 
Um, we had a match that, you know, was one of those matches that I think surprised a lot of people. You know, like you said, he's he's a guy that right now has an amount of uh, buzz around him, you know, that because of his working uh, ability, you know, obviously his athletic ability, you know, his game has changed so drastically over the last year or so. And then obviously he's getting a little of attention on the on Twitter and whatnot from his little rants with the old Seth, Seth Rollins there. Um, so it's one of those things like I'm, I don't take it lightly at all. I know exactly who he is and what he's about and the amazing talent that he actually is. And obviously, like I said, because he bested me in the New Japan Cup, I understand that he is a true threat. It doesn't matter if you're going to put the titles of junior champion or, you know, the junior uh, league champion and all those little monikers that you want to throw at him. Um, he's His game is very much a heavyweight game, even if his size is a little bit less than a heavyweight size. So I don't take him lightly at all, but I will definitely throw him around like he's a feather. It's always fun watching you beat up on those little guys. <laughs> uh, also featured on the card for Dallas, you have the King of Darkness, Evil, taking on Bad Luck Fale. Sonata takes on your stable mate, Zack Sabre Jr. Kota Ibushi faces off with the former Hideo Itami, now known once again as Kenta. And as we mentioned, the huge main event as the faces of two generations face off one more time. The ace, Hiroshi Tanahashi, takes on the current reigning IWGP World Heavyweight Champion, the man that everybody is gunning for inside of the G1, Kazuchika yep. Okada. Mr. Yep. Archer, as, as you scout your other opponents inside of the A block, um, I, are you watching these matches backstage? Which ones are you most looking forward to? And who are you most looking forward to facing off with inside of the G1 this year? Well, I mean, the, talking about a lot of the guys that are in my block, um, you know, a lot of the matches for me, I look at it as revenge matches. I've faced Tanahashi in in the uh, uh, G1 a couple times. I've faced Okada in the G1 and the New Japan Cup. I've faced Osprey in the New Japan Cup. I've faced Fale in the New Japan Cup. These are all guys that I've faced before. And, you know, for one reason or another, they all bested me. So I, I've got a lot of revenge on my mind for this tour. Um, you know, the guys, guys like Ibushi, who, you know, uh, truly absolutely one of the most amazing wrestlers in the world and i've never had the chance to face him i think i've been across the ring with him a couple times and in, in you know multi-person tag matches but barely had any interaction with him you know evil and sonata i've been in the ring several times within tag team situations but never in a single situation i even have a long history with sonata uh back in all japan back in 2009 had a short tour over there when he was still kind of a, a young lion young boy for them um, you know, and then I've obviously I've, I've faced against Zach in uh, tag league competition and we had some good interactions. But, you know, we're stable mates. So we're almost every single time we're on the same side tagging with each other. And this will be one of the first times that we go against each other. And the G1 is an interesting climate because it's one of those places where, you, like you said, we're all gunning for that heavyweight title. And right now, Okada has that title. So winning this tournament gives us a direct opportunity to face him or whoever the champion is by that time of the Tokyo Dome. Um, and then you've got Kenta, you know, and there's a little history there with the whole Noah connection. Even though he wasn't there, he was gone by the time that we were working with Noah. Uh, the person and personality he had become when he left Noah and went up to WWE was a very different person. Um, so I think myself and many people in, in the wrestling world are hoping to see Kenta return to the ring, you know, and there's another extreme physical size difference between Kenta and myself. But I think, you know, his history, his ability, his striking, everything that he brings to the table. If Kenta shows up in the G1 climax, it's going to be a very interesting uh, matchup between myself and him and all the guys that he's going to be facing. So, you know, you've got a lot of deals. And then, you know, Folly and I are the only two real giants in this whole tag league. And we're in the same block, like I said. So you're going to see, see two monsters of the business, two monsters of New Japan face off against each other in this tournament. So it, it's going to be an interesting dynamic. And, you know, my plan, like I said, I've got a lot of revenge on my mind. Uh, it's going to be interesting facing a couple guys for the first time ever in any kind of capacity. And then, you know, facing some guys that I've faced before in tag team situations, but in a single situation. 
to run through the B block quickly, you have Jeff Cobb representing Ring of Honor, Hiroki right. Goto, Tomohiro Ishii, John Moxley, Tetsuya Naito, Juice Robinson, Tai Chi, Shingo Takagi, Switchblade Jay White, and that bastard Toru Yano rounding out the B block. <laughs> Mr. Archer, anyone inside of the B block that you really wish was in the A block so that you could beat them up and please say that bastard Yano. <laughs> but see, that's the, that, that's the crazy part about my A block is that I have a lot of revenge on my mind with my A block competitors that I've faced before, whether it was the G1 or the New Japan Cup, and they bested me. They beat me. Um, in the B block, I've faced and beaten a lot of those guys. I've I've beaten Ishii in the in the the G1 climax. I've I've beaten Goto in the G1 climax. I've beaten Yano in the G1 climax. So a lot of those guys are guys that I've faced, and I don't put them down in any kind of capacity. But I've faced them, and I've actually won uh, on in facing those guys. Uh, you know, you guys got like Jeff Cobb again, who I've faced several times in in tag team capacity, but never in a singles capacity. Um, Moxley, who's got he's Mr. Hype right now. Um, I think there's no other way that you can say it. You know, he's finished his time up north uh, and then very dramatically made a, an entrance at AEW. And now he's a part of New Japan. He's the U.S. champion. Um, and he's somebody that, you know, it would be a very interesting face off because I, I think he and I have crossed paths many times. Uh, through the different companies over the different years, but have never faced each other and never worked in the same company at the same time. Uh, Juice Robinson, somebody I think who's absolutely taken hold of his time in New Japan, obviously becoming a U.S. champion and whatnot. And him and uh, uh, Mikey Nichols have a chance at Tag Team Gold down in Australia this weekend. Um, you know, I, it'd be cool to face him again more in a singles capacity. I think all of them are exciting. Uh, but for me, I, I just, you know, I'd like to take down the hype man. I'd like to take down John Moxley, put him, uh, put him a notch down, you know, show him exactly who I am and what I'm about. And, you know, my plan is to be, uh, is to basically piss off a lot of people and in, in, on the internet uh, when I take down their, their fan favorites and internet darlings. Oh, I love it. Uh, speaking of John Moxley, the current IWGP United States champion, um, as an American who has wrestled in New Japan since 2011, how right. did the locker room feel about Moxley just walking in and getting a title shot at Juice? No idea, man. I wasn't there. I, I was I was at home when the, the whole Dominion thing came about, and you know he, he and uh, Juice faced off, and then obviously – uh, winning the title on his first night in New Japan, you know, so it's one of those things like I don't know how they felt, you know, it's an interesting capacity anytime a wrestler steps into a new locker room and, you know, does, especially when they step into a new locker room and win one of the titles. It's one of those scenarios where there's a lot of guys that have busted their ass and, you know, feel like they've earned chances and opportunities but aren't getting them, haven't got them, whatever the case may is. And that's why I call him Mr. Hype Man. I'm not taking anything away from him, but that's exactly what it is. If he didn't have the hype behind him, I don't think that opportunity would have presented itself in the way it did. Uh, he absolutely capitalized on it, and I think there's a lot of people gunning for him right now. Um, I know he has a very high passion for this business. So I don't think he handled himself in any inappropriate way in the locker room. So I'm sure that, you know, he's got some friends and he's got a lot of foes, especially now that he's the U S champion, because anytime you're holding a title in any company, you've got a target on your back. And he decided to come in and get a target put on his back immediately. Uh, one final question for you, Mr. Archer, before we let you go, sure. uh, as, as we mentioned earlier, you're a proud member of Suzuki Goon, ran by one right. of the most dangerous men in the world, Minoru Suzuki. Right. Uh, Suzuki, not real happy about being left out of this year's G1 Climax. In fact, I know my Japanese is a little rough, but I'm <laughs> pretty sure he said he was going to murder everybody in the field unless they let him into the G1. What is the current <laughs> status with Suzuki? And is everybody watching their backs here because Murder Grandpa's coming to get them? Yeah, I wouldn't call him murder grandpa if I was you, because you know he might might not take light to the whole grandpa aspect. Well, well see, I, I I I only feel safe knowing that we're on different <laughs> continents. That's the only way that I ever feel safe. When Suzuki's he, in the states, I check under my bed for Minoru Suzuki. And most people do. He's he's the he's the boogeyman that, that nobody wants to find. Um, you know, I think everybody's paying attention. Uh, you know, obviously he's pissed off. He wants to be part of the G one. 
you know, I'd, I'd like to think that uh, Zach and I have a little leeway with him, so he'll probably try to murder a lot of other people before he gets to us. But, you know, I've faced Suzuki in different capacities, whether it was the G1 uh, and tag team situations and whatnot. So, yeah, I, you know, I have all respect, and definitely he's the most one of the most dangerous men, one of the most dangerous men in the world. But I also like to think that I am as well, because, you know, my little moniker is everybody dies. And if he wants to murder everybody and I say everybody dies, we're going to have an interesting uh, face off if it comes down to he and I. Personally, I think he should just tell Tai Chi, no, you can't do it. I'm going to do it instead. That's what that's what <laughs> I would do. That's what I would do. It's the G1 Climax. It kicks off Saturday, July 6th in Dallas, Texas, live on New Japan World and Access TV. Uh, that's Direct TV, channel 340 for those of you with Direct TV. Few select tickets still available. Be a part of this incredible history-making show. I'm even considering driving down, even though it's like a 13-hour drive. It's the G1 Climax in the United <laughs> States of America, for God's sake. Mr. Archer, thank Thank you so much for joining us today. Please tell everyone to keep up how to keep up with you on social media and anything else that you would like to plug before we let you go today. Yeah, absolutely, man. You know, if they want to check me out, follow me on Twitter. It's at Lance Hoyt. Uh, my Facebook is Lance Hoyt. It's a public page. I also have the American Psycho Lance Hoyt. Um, you know, and then my Instagram is Lance underscore Hoyt. I usually keep everything under my real name just because it's, you know, nobody else can take it. It's mine. Um, but you know, I definitely promote everything that I'm doing and what I'm doing. You know, like I said, we do have the G1 climax, uh, on July 6th in Dallas, Texas. I also have an event on July 7th in Caldwell, Texas for a company called Lions Pride Sports. So if you're anywhere around the college, Bryan College Station, Caldwell, Texas area on July 7th, come down, check that out. It's going to be an interesting show. Uh, we're, we're having, uh, uh, T Hawk and, uh, Lindemann from OWE. They're going to be a part of that show. Um, so if you're, if you're watching those guys, you know, they've shown up on AEW and, uh, T Hawk is the Russell one heavyweight champion at this time. You know, they're going to be down there in Caldwell, Texas on July 7th, being a part of that show. Um, but definitely hit me up, say something cool. And if you got something cool to say, I'll definitely respond. If you say something stupid, I definitely won't. Thank you so much, Mr. Archer. Keep in touch. Hopefully we'll do this again soon. Thank you, man. I appreciate your time. Shit, I can't 